three easy steps to gut health. A happy tummy equals happy immune systems. I am at South Africa's AGS Design and Decor Show. And right now we're going to be in conversation and talking about the art of homemaking with amazing individuals from Black Pearl as well as the team at SHF Living. Let's talk about things to think about as I'm redecorating or I'm redesigning my space or renovating. Let's talk to Zimkita from Black Pearl as well as Siabesho. Let's go. Hello and welcome everyone to the Art of Homemaking, a conversation curated for Design Joburg in collaboration with Art of Superwoman. We have Black Pearl with us, as well as SHF Living. Zimkita and Sia are with me from Black Pearl and SHF Living. Um, I have Amanda with me. Thank you so much for joining me in this conversation. Um, we're going to delve into the Art of Homemaking and I want to start with Zimkita, right? Yes. Woman to woman, black woman to black woman. I think, you know, some of us are the first of our generation to break into spaces such as this and to curate for spaces and for platforms um, that are at this magnitude, especially at Design Joburg and also um, on platforms such as SHF Living, right? Um, how are we in our generation kind of redefining what homemaking is? and how we create our own spaces and kind of curate with the idea of where we come from um, and not um, an influence um, that is telling us how to do things within our own spaces. Well, I think just in general, the way we are living our lives is no longer in a cookie cutter way. And we, because we're so much more exposed in terms of lifestyle, color, we travel more. When you think about our parents, it's almost like, okay, cut beds or you know the bears shop and go pedal up and my neighbors have the same thing my grandma had the same thing whereas now we're so much more exposed to like a diverse and like you know a plethora of like choice and even in our styling now i've discovered oh wait a minute actually you know my style is simple whereas i have my friend here who has a more eccentric style like we don't even have to look the same <laughs> we love each other dearly but you know we show ourselves in different ways and then we do that in our homes as well and i find that because now there's choice you can actually choose actually you know what orange is in season but i don't like orange i prefer gray and then you go for the gray um amanda how important was it then to have this represented within the spaces such as shf living so we as SHF, so previously known as SHF, and we recently rebranded to SHF Living, everyone, SHF Living. Um, so for us, we, we had a, um, a relook at everything that we've been doing over the years, and we thought, well, we really need to appeal to a younger market, we need to appeal to our people, and we needed to change the narrative of really what was SHF. So we had a lot of designers whom we, you know, we looked at and had conversations with. And out of everybody, we honestly thought that Black Pearl was the perfect duo to represent our brand and everything that we stand for. Um, guys, these two are accountants, by the way. <laughs> and I loved their story. I love how they have, you know, founded their business on friendship and they just took it to new heights. They, they, they design um, style represents our furniture so well in, in many ways that we could have never ever thought. So that's actually why we came and thought, oh, these are the people we wanna work with and this is a partnership that you can call a marriage. We'll be married to these two. I think just to add to that, uh, we came into the industry where it was very tough and we didn't know what to do, when to start, and SHF was like part of those places where we used to roam around when we used to enjoy furniture pieces. And we've been collaborating for quite some time. I mean, in 2016, uh, we did a man cave and it had mostly SHF's uh, furniture. And I think now it's migrating into a space where it's all about the living and our lifestyle and bringing that art more into SHF. 
we are happy to do that. And also just coming full circle with SHF enough. Like you were saying, when we had expos, we had no furniture, no real manufacturing situation happening. And we're just like, listen, we'll bring your furniture back in a good place. We just need to look good at this expo. And now, here we are bringing our own pieces, you know, to work with their pieces. So I think that's also remarkable for us as a company just to show our growth. And thank you to the support of SHA for allowing us to grow and allowing us to be there. And so stepping into, um, you know, creating pieces and also collaborating now in marriage with platforms like SHF Living, how important then is the freedom of expression within our generation and that shift that we're having now where our expression is different. We are we're not exactly the doily generation, but no, some of the elements and that nostalgia are still showing up in a lot of how we're creating. Yes, I think uh, what we've mostly tried to do, I think as an interior designers and all designers, uh, we try to make space tell a story more than anything. Um, it's not just a furniture piece. It's not just a piece of artwork that you get anywhere. Like there's detail that goes into the craftsmanship of, of items and things, just to make sure that it allows us to express ourselves in the spaces that we are. So back in the days, Mama, you can't sit on that chair because <laughs> there's new technology now that allows your formal space to be a space where children can jump on, on furniture. And it's our narrative to basically drive that and make sure that make your spaces speak to who you are. Yeah, you're right. And it's literally about honoring our clients as well. As much as it's important to honor the space within that you, you know, you're working within, the client as well. Because design is also personal. You know, you're going to someone's like bedroom, you're going to the living space and just honoring that and honoring and respecting their energy, their space and what they have called you to do. Because it's so easy to be like, you terracotta MB, but your client is like, but I love terracotta. So then it's up to us to then find a way to make terracotta work and make terracotta beautiful. I'm so offended. I love terracotta. <laughs> <laughs> it was just an example because that pot is terracotta. <laughs> <laughs> so the most important thing which I would like to share with you guys is that SHF Living has got 93% locally manufactured products. 93%. And we used to be lower than that. And the likes of Black Pearl inspired us to make sure that we support the local manufacturers, number one. And number two, because when you import an item, it generally comes in one specific color, one, two, three, max. So the, the designs that Zimkita and Sabesho have been designing and all the mood boards that they submit to us told us, you know, and, shown us, and showed us the importance of making sure that five different people can have the same item in uh, you know, a few different configurations. So you can get a cupboard in white and your friend has it in red with a, a, a black backboard or whatever. So we just wanted to make sure that our product range speaks to the people and it represents each and everyone's personality. And so with things, you know, I can have the same thing as my friend, but it represents who I am. How then do I walk into spaces like SHF Living? Um, and I want Sia to answer this. And pick pieces that represent who I am without leaving me behind as a homemaker. It's so easy to walk into spaces and like something, and purely by liking it, you think it'll fit into your space. But how do I get to know myself through pieces and get pieces that actually work for my personality and my being in my home? So I think that's where we kind of come in, in terms of creating concepts. And I think... We, we walk into many homes that are like, oh, I liked this there, I liked that there, I bought this there and there and there. And when you put it in one space, it doesn't speak to each other and it doesn't represent the person. So I think it's important to then have those consultations with people that professionally know kind of like the direction of how things should look like at the end. And we always make sure our clients' needs are always in front of them. I've got vases from my mom's house that have been passed on to me and they just don't fit in my space. Do you think it's important to draw inspiration from things such as that and kind of draw out your space around them? Or is it okay to refurb things in this day and age and well, kind of rework things? We believe in how, that. How do we cling uh, on to that nostalgia without completely, you know? So we get a lot of clients that uh, like are stuck in 
things that bring memorabilia to them. And we're all about upcycling. I think that's one thing we do. So we don't, we don't get to your house and like, oh, throw away everything. So we literally refurb in terms of like your, if it's a coffee table that your mom gave you, and obviously it's in mahogany or dark mahogany. Demon I mean, that mahogany. style is not... <laughs> You guys have a problem with terracotta and mahogany, hey? <laughs> no, like... All I mean, the things that are very examples. present in Those my house. Those are just, like, prime examples. So what we like doing is actually taking that table, tearing it down in terms of its color and finish, and then we've got monocoats that we do these days that, you know, it's a stain that you put, it, you, you put on the table. It brings it back to this area, but it's still your mom's piece. So we like doing things like that. Uh, if it's an old couch, we refurbish it. We can reamp it in terms of like, the look and feel. Some things are beautiful in their old nature, but if they can come back to in this, in this time, then we can bring it back. I mean, vases, you can add a cluster somewhere where you know this is a corner where, well, not a shrine for your mom in, <laughs> in, in your husband's house or like, you know, it's just a corner where you have a moment as I said, like our spaces create moments that speak to us. So there's a connection that you have with your mom and there's a vase that she gave you at, on your wedding day or whatever that needs to be in your house. Nobody get you call power if I get fire figure with this. And then that's, that's up to you. That's part of refurbing and recycling. Yeah. And you can use pieces like that in places like a bathroom, for example. You know, we often forget that, guys, a bathroom is another opportunity to bring out the style from the rest of your house into there. It could be something as simple as, you know, lime towels in the summer. It could just be an artwork. People never think, oh, I can actually print something, you know, and put it in the bathroom. So you can use those vases there. And because it's a cluster and a collection, it looks intentional. As opposed to if you'd broken them down, then it's like, hi man, every corner has like a random old vase that makes no sense. So then keeping them together also creates a collection. Then it's like, oh, this is, you know, like my antique vase collection. <laughs> Take like a big front plant, put it in there, and it already looks, you know, fresh and different. Are there design rules that are just never meant to be broken in, in homemaking? Do you know what? For me, I don't like, um, which is ironic because I'm quite analytical um, by nature. I do like method and rules. But in um, the creative space, I don't like saying rules because it just sounds so oppressive and so limiting. Whereas, you know, with creativity, you should just like literally open your mind and if it works for you, it works for you. Even if I don't like something, that doesn't matter. For as long as you think it's beautiful and it works for you and the intention that you intended it to, then that's fantastic. That's designed for you. So I don't really like to think about design. Maybe ask us, can we give you some pointers, some hints on things, you know, some certain ways you can enhance things in your home without having to go to the shops or having to buy new things. And it's like simple little things, just a coat of paint, for example, like new scatter covers. You have the same, you know, couch in summer. Oh, let me go into the prior colors. It's autumn now. Let's, you know, go back into autumn leaf colors. So it's little things like that you can just do inexpensively, but then they make such a huge difference in your, in your space. Weirdly, um I was actually uh, speaking to the, one of the artists, well, the only artist that's on our stand right now, Tokozani, this week. And I was saying, yo, I don't have any more walls because I really love his art. And he's like, hi, Sia. Just move things around. Put this there and there. So I don't think it's, there's a rule, but I think naturally you then like change your space to then make it feel different in certain seasons. And it's those little things like you could probably, we need to trade in art, Tokozani. I'm just saying, like, <laughs> just to, to change within the seasons. You've seen something for a bit of time now. It's nice to see it in another space, and then it tells something different. And just on that topic about moving things around and readjusting spaces, um, I think a lot of people are going through evolutions of, you know, you starting a family, or you've just moved into your first space or your first home, and then you transition to starting a family, and then you transition to grown children, then you transition to, you know, empty nesting. Is it expensive to evolve, you know, through these, um, through these phases of life? And I think there's this idea that luxury, creating luxury within my spaces, creating pockets of luxury is such an expensive thing. And, you know, I'm stuck in the space that I have. And then I'm just adding here things here and there. And I really am struggling to evolve my space. What's the most cost-effective way of doing it? You know, I always um, say, especially if you're limited in terms of budget, invest like wisely in the big pieces. 
buy quality big pieces. Your sofa, quality. You know, there's some things where, fine, go spend 200 bucks on a cushion, but don't spend 5,000 rand on a sofa. Like, invest in the big pieces. I hope my then, husband's listening. <laughs> where is he? Where is he? No, so you already said that he's going to take rent. two pieces from us, so they will last. They will definitely last. So, you know, if you do that, if you invest in the big pieces, then when you move, like we said earlier, you can reupholster that. Now, you know, you have little kids. Let's maybe look into hardier fabric. They move away. Empty nest. You into doily florals. Let's make your sofa floral. So if you do get like quality pieces, they can carry you for a much longer time. As opposed to, I feel like sometimes, especially when you're young, when you start working, you're trying to skimp. Because also you're trying to live a lifestyle. <laughs> you're like, I've got money now. I want to be out here, but I also want a pretty place. And you try, and then you skimp on things like that. Don't do it. I'd prefer not to have something and then just wait a while to have, you know, a quality, a quality piece. Like there's a sofa that I bought ages ago. Uh, it's probably like 10 to 15 years when I was still um, in, like the first year I was working actually. It's at home right now in a different fabric. The frame is still there. It's still like living and carrying people. <laughs> yes. all this time <laughs> friendships have gone and passed and like it's gone through stages but that sofa is still there I think what's nice about what you're saying it ties into what you said you were talking about earlier on about materials and how we have new materials that are able to hold things like animals and children and that you know that can last longer and you can clean them easier these days it's not the same as what we had before right um, like when I was starting to have cho when we were starting out having children I couldn't buy the kind of things that I, I can buy now yeah. because materials weren't the same yes. yeah. and you can be smart as well um, nowadays you get outdoor velvet fabric mm -hmm. so that you can think about that if you've got dogs and kids because that's also like hardier and it's easier to clean so that's why we're saying you know consult you know an expert or professional because then that's yes. the kind of advice that you're going to receive you know so we can tell you you know you don't have to give up the lushness Let's just think about it differently. Use a different type of fabric. And because we have that knowledge, we can then advise you to be like, okay, have you thought about these options? And for some reason, we only think that like cream tweed is like the lick shot, like luxe <laughs> look. And it's, it's not it. <laughs> and yeah. it's also about how you layer a space. What's that? Cream? Cream, lick shot, luxe tweed fabric. You know that... It's the next big thing. Is that what you're saying? No. Everyone uh, thinks that like it looks is. super expensive <laughs> and it's the end all and be all. I'm just saying there are different ways of creating a, a stylish look without necessarily having to break your bank. And there are like a million options out there. I think what I do want to say is that I'm sure now we can all see how important it is to get an interior designer. Right, guys? Mm-hmm. I'm so happy to see the iconic Donald Ngumalo amongst all of us. Hello, Donald. Um, guys, I just want to say if there's anyone in here who is a, an aspiring designer, there is a future. There is a future. Um, we as SHF Living, we do believe in designers. And that's why, I mean, I think with all the questions, the brilliant questions that Olech has been asking, we can all see the need. And if you speak to the likes of Black Pearl, then you'll know that it doesn't have to break the bank. And you can do your house in stages. So you can do your lounge first, you can do your living, your, sorry, your, your dining room in stages that you can afford, but do not go and buy a couch for 5,000. I mean, uh, just to add on to what Amanda's saying, like we've been growing with our clients in terms of their spaces. Like, you know, some people don't have the knowledge of how things cost and they're like, oh no, I can, and we're like, no, invest in this because it's something that you will appreciate. I think also as black people, we think that, oh, like spending so much money on yourself is not uh, an important thing. But I think our homes where we stay, I mean, you live on that couch every day, but you want to spend 5,000 rand, but you've got a Louis Vuitton bag or like a brand oh. bag that's like whatever. Yet your couch is breaking the, like the next moment. I think we just also need sometimes to prioritize thing, things and... I think it's just an education point that you can live in luxury in your own space, not at a breaking bank budget. And I think that's one thing that um, lockdown and COVID um, taught us, right? Yes. The homemaking is so important, no matter who you are. Curating your space is so important. Creating pockets of luxury within your space. I'm not sure if Vika's here, but she is huge on creating pockets of luxury <laughs> within yes, your spaces. Is. And you don't have to break the bank in doing so. And, you know, it's all about 
creating things in collaboration with others. What We don't know what we don't know. I don't know half the things that they talk to me about sometimes, but I have to inquire. I have to ask more questions. I have to ask about how it's working with me, how we can collaborate in ensuring that my space is me and is my children and works for me, right? And this is why I appreciate spaces like SHF Living and I appreciate Black Pearl and that you make that happen for me, you know, for, for me and anybody else that needs these services and also needs these spaces in their lives. Something that I also want to talk about is the importance of art within our spaces and how to put art in our spaces, how to resonate art with our space. I've made mistakes of just buying art I love and just placing it on my space. And you either find two things, which we discussed in an earlier conversation. The art overwhelms the space, or the space just does not speak to the art. How do I ensure that as I'm investing in art and also preserving, art, the preservation of art is also important for our generation. How do I ensure that the two work together and work with my design team in ensuring that translates well? So you can do it either way. You can use the art piece that you already have as your muse for the space, or once you've done, see what the space feels like, and then when you find art that speaks to you, and fit that into your living space. And then obviously, I mean, with art, it's not necessary to say because there's blue paint and the artwork, your sofa needs to be blue. That's not what we're saying. It's just marry, marry the two together, whatever energy you're getting from the artwork or you're getting the same energy from the space. So they shouldn't fight with each other. And also what space are you putting in? What dimension is your artwork? So I think a lot of us forget that um, even when you're buying furniture on online, guys, dimensions, measure. Whoa, I mean, a measuring measure. tape is 50 bucks at Builders, <laughs> at Jalma. Please measure. Measure. Because Guilty. dimensions are a huge <laughs> thing. And same with, like, you know, art pieces, because you also want to honor the art. You want to make it feel at home as well. And your furniture and the art shouldn't be fighting, but actually just be harmonious. And it's also so amazing the feeling that artwork can just, like, finish off a space. And it just gives you such a, it's like a, such a different energy, man, when you walk into a room and you just engrossed by the work of art and then when your eyes start wandering you're just like oh my gosh like everything is actually just in harmony and so beautiful and this is why you need black pearl <laughs> <laughs> and you I, have have said it to say, I have to say that the measurements are a very costly mistake I a would know you make one. a mistake with a leather sofa of 75,000 rand uh -huh. So please measure, guys. Yeah, and you don't want to be cutting up 75,000 rand yeah. for what you could have been for like 30,000 rand. True, very true. Thank you so much for this conversation. I want to pull in the audience. If you have any questions, please do raise your hand. I will swing a microphone over to you. Um, I'm, I'm an interior designer. Well, I work with my sister. I'm a stylist. She's an, an interior designer. Please but, put the mic closer to you. Um, the one thing that we've realized is We've had people, we've worked with people, with people of the other race a lot. We've brought them into our work and they've assisted. But we've also approached people of the same color as us to work with us and to guide us. And to, but we haven't had positive responses. What, is, what are you guys working on? And since you got the opportunity with SHF to work with them, are you also opening doors for other upcoming artists to also work with you? Um, so that's, that's the journey that an interior designer like kind of goes through. Um, it's not an easy one. Uh, I think we have been in the past, and I think it's very important to, to, to give opportunity to our fellow brothers and sisters in the spaces and the manufacturing space and all of that stuff. And it's a grooming thing and also a lack of privilege thing. Um, I think we are pretty much privileged enough to give support to them. And it's important that you also upskill them in terms of the product that they finish. Because at the end of the day, as you said, the counterparty still use our people to basically put that product together. Um, it's just a, a matter of management. It's a journey that one goes through as an interior designer until you find your own feet in terms of finding uh, the appropriate supplier. But also, in, um, I'm very big on like pulling each other up. 
we didn't get here by ourselves. We've had, you know, we've had our mentors, we've had people who've, you know, guided us as well and shown us and, you know, opened doors for us and just in terms of, you know, creating networks that have helped us grow our business. So you're more than welcome to contact us if you want someone to talk to. I, like, I personally do not mind, you know, speaking to you. Maybe you just want to vent. You want advice on, okay, if I have an issue with a supplier or if I have an issue with a client, how can I help you resolve? Like, how do you, if you want to help with costing, if you want to help with, um, you know, how do I bring my product out? What other opportunities can I think of maybe where you can then go put yourself out there, you know, give us a Support is uh, yeah, everywhere. I don't mind doing that at all. And in fact, it actually, it, it just makes me feel good to be able to help someone else and pay it forward in a sense. Because I'd be lying if I said to you, oh, we just woke up, we, you know, quit our Excel spreadsheeting jobs and now we're here. No, it did not happen like that at all. <laughs> so I strongly believe in the each one, teach one. So that's why I, I love Black Pearl once again. But I also just want to say to everybody sitting here who's not a designer that it may sound wrong. And I, if, if I offend anyone, I apologize in advance. We black people are the market. We are the market at all these luxury stores. I don't understand why our brothers and sisters who are in design, making art, are struggling. I really don't. Please, we need to fix it, all of us. So I was stuck on the 5,000 rents joke. And I wanted to find out, you know, as we're speaking about the art of homemaking, how best then do you come on board to help clients, you know, that cannot afford what you call, you know, quality, you know, uh, because I don't want us to remain on the 5,000 rand. So if I say my piece is, ex uh, is quality, is it based on the amount or is it based on, you know, I, I'm, I'm stuck there. What is it based on and how do you help clients to then get to, the, to, to get pieces that they can call quality, but then yet it fits within their budget? Thank you. I also wanted to just chip in on that. In, you know, one thing that, and, and you will, you know, link this into, into whatever you're going to say. One thing that I had to learn and appreciate is what goes into the making of the products. I did not appreciate that when I was starting to create my home and everything. You know, you're excited. You have a 20,000 rand budget to create your lounge, you know. So 5,000 goes to the couch. 2,000 goes to the coffee table, but you don't realize what goes into the making of those items and the quality that is there is not the same as something that's going to last me until my children are even three years old because they will climb on it and it will break in a year. And so it's appreciating the materials that go into the making yeah, of so each I was, product. I was about to say it. In the same way, you get different types of wood. You get pine, you get oak. Price is very different. They can build the same thing but it's not going to last the same. the same. It's not going to have the same finish. So I'd like to apologize if I made it sound like I'm looking down on someone who wants to buy a couch for a friend. I was mainly making a point that if you're going to spend 5,000 rand on a sofa, Expense. it's going to last you six months a year. So that's what I was saying. So I'm not trying to be patronized and apologizing if I came across like that. No, no, I was just stuck on the prices. Not necessarily, you could have made it oh, 10,000 rands. Okay. But I think the, at the core of my question was that, do you come in and help your client to say, let's go treasure hunting for yes. a quality piece that can yeah. fit within your budget? Yes. So I just took it from there, but not necessarily that I'm stuck on the oh, 5,000 rands. Okay, no, 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 we do. Okay. So what <laughs> we love to do is also make um, our services accessible to everyone. And I know there's always been a notion, well, Sebastian and I have always found, like when we meet clients, people think for some You're reason so I need half a million rand in order to have interior design services and it's not like that at all. It's just what is your budget and realistically too. If you say to me, I want to do an outdoor space and I've saved 10,000 rand, I'm going to be like, I'm sorry, I can't help you. But if you want to do a bathroom, wallpaper, finishes, we can do that. Um, hi guys, so I'm a big believer in interior designers and, and decorators because I'm not the most creative person. But the question I have is, when selecting an interior designing company, so for example, you guys, how important is it to, or when you, yeah, do you select it based on, do, do we find companies that are, must I find a company based on my style, or do you guys um, 
cater to all styles? I don't know if that makes sense. Or is there a specific style that you guys... Um, so I think what's important in finding uh, an interior designer is a relationship because you're going to be in a relationship with that person for a long period. And also, I think people's energies attract one another. And that's important in your selection of that, is that, do I, like, is that my style? And also, most of our work is out there. Uh, our, our, our skill set is understanding the client more. So we are here for you as any interior designer. Some may drive their own narrative in like a certain look and feel, and it's up to you whether you, uh, you, you, you go according to that or you find one that's going to be like, who's Tsikagazi or who's, who's this person? What does it mean to them? And all of that stuff. So it's very important to have a nice relationship with the person that, who's going to be creating your home, something that you go home to every day because it, it goes in, in, in everything like the, from the process of you guys meeting, from the concept phase into the installation. And energy is everything because... We've had clients also that sometimes their energy is just a bit weird and things on that installation or like Listen, that. Listen, the chuckle breakdown that on that day. Will break down it never and the has client before, will be swearing at will. you or like the, the sofa would come in and as they sit on it or whatever, something spills, like something. So it's always great to find the right energy in terms of your space because that's going to be your space. So to answer your question, we specifically are more style versatile. Yeah. So we'll get our brief from the client, you will drive that. But then again, we do bring our own personality flair. and flair. As you can see, we're different, but we're lovely. <laughs> <laughs> How do you manage to bring your style together as a team? In, yes, when you're working in someone else's space. So I actually have two questions. And the second one is, because the nostalgia out there is that interior design services are expensive. So how have you put yourselves out there in a way that people can actually understand that anybody can, not necessarily every, anybody, but those who wish to make use of interior designer's services actually can get access to you without breaking the bank? <laughs> I just um, want to say, sorry, Sebastio, if you love something, you'll pay for it. That's all I'm saying. <laughs> I also think that a lot of the time the accessibility to the knowledge that we have and the knowledge that we're sharing here today um, has been so inaccessible to so many of us. And we have also not been curious enough or scared to ask the relevant questions because these spaces were only reserved for few. So when we say, you know, it's expensive to get an interior designer, it's only because I've been scared to ask you what your prices are. Right. Because I've only seen people that live affluent lives having interior designers yeah. or having um, certain services. So it's so important for us to ask the uncomfortable questions or to ask and be curious about the things that we want in our spaces. And again, I reference Vika quite a lot, but Vika will say, <laughs> when you want something, be, ask the questions. Ask the questions. Ask the questions. When you want luxurious spaces in your space, it's not expensive. But until you ask the questions and you probe the spaces that those things exist in, you won't get them. You won't get into those spaces. You won't be able to tap into those spaces and create the life you want. Yeah. So ask the questions. You don't know how many times, like, uh, even your friends or people that you hang around with would be like, Yo, <laughs> I'm like, all the time. Because it's just test us. And then they test us and they're like, actually... And I don't know what I was scared of because at the end of the day, you, you, you tend to then appreciate what you get at the end of the day. And also sometimes you make, you're so cost, you're so cost conscious that you forget the quality that you are getting in terms of yeah. the service that you get. And I think it's very important for us also as designers to educate people that we're not expensive. Like don't look at me in my what, 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 what and think like, I am here for your budget and how much your budget can get you. And you deserve and you, your space needs to be important. I, I think we need to answer her question in terms of how we work together. Um, <laughs> the question was how you have two distinct style. styles yourselves. Yes. Now when you move into somebody else's space, how, how do you ensure that, that you're, not, you're not kind of spilling into their space and creating your own showroom in somebody else's home? 
Do you know what I no think one that, sees? That's, is that, is that, is that the, the was question? that the question? Yeah. It's a. I think it's also about yeah. like our styles. Yeah. yeah. I think it is it, really okay, about yeah. our styles. So you don't see the boxing and fighting that happens before <laughs> you see that beautiful mood board. <laughs> no, but like joking. I mean, we do have um, different styles, but I think because the foundation of our partnership is also trust and love because we were friends for a long time before we started our company together. So I love that how then it spills into our working relationship because even when we do disagree and might get annoyed, I'm listening because I respect him and I respect what he thinks about something and I, my point is to understand as opposed to, no, but it should really be my way all the time. So that really does help. And I think it's, I actually don't even know how to quantify or explain how we merge our styles together. It almost now, it just, it just happens. Like he'll come up with an idea or he'll be like, oh, let's use this new orange fabric. And I'll be like, I love the texture. How about we tone it down a bit for this specific look? So I think the main, the, the main thing that drives that is respect for each other, respect of the product that you are, we give to people and respect for each other as well, more than anything, and the business. So in, in certain spaces, you know when, okay, like yes. you need to fall back. I'm like, and friend, like, there's a bachelor. You, you, you can also your... see that she's not gonna budge on this one. And then I'll just like throw something else there in the end. It's like, oh, it actually works. This is how I know that, like she, you know she had thought it through this way and this way, and then I'll just throw it in like at the end. And she's like, Okay, friend, uh, it actually works. <laughs> so it's just giving and knowing each other. I think more than anything, it's knowing each other and understanding who we are and what we're gonna dri trying to drive. And yeah. Yeah, but like you were saying, you also read your client. So maybe if someone's more um, towards like soft, um, luxe, feminine, you know, like styling, then I might. I don't want to use a dominate because we don't dominate each other. But they may I'll relate like, to you Yes, more. then I'll then take more focus on that project. And like I was saying, if there's like a bachelor, he wants dark-sided pieces, and I'm like, say, sure. I'm more Kangela's dark-sided pieces because... <laughs> <laughs> but I'm sure sometimes you can see in like the total space where like certain things come from, and it, it, it kind of balances. So there would be like that softness and a balance of like, okay, there's like a rustic side or just like a, you know. And that's why we've element. enjoyed, sorry, working with SHF and using their pieces because they that's actually true. like um, speak to both of us. Yeah. And that's how we actually decided to go with them because they stand for everything that we stand for. So respect is a big part of our business. And I looked at the, the way they've been relating over the years ever since I've known them and I just knew that we are right at home with these two. They're joined at the yeah, hip, yeah. and you can't talk about Sia to Zimkita because, I mean, she'll be in the car on Bluetooth, so hello. <laughs> so uh, half the time, like, oh, by the way, Zimkita's on the other side, so don't say anything or don't like... Gossip, don't gossip, don't gossip, don't <laughs> gossip. Thank you so much. We've completely run out of time and we've actually run over time, but thank you so much for this amazing conversation. We could go on and on and on. I think we're all curious. So um, if you have more questions for Sia and Zimkita, please pop into the space behind us, um, SHF Living, as well as the Black Pearl Space. Amazing um, pieces over there. You can pop in there and ask them more questions. Thank you. Thank, thank, you, you, thank you so much. Thank you, thank you so much. steps to gut health. A happy tummy equals happy immune systems.